call this meeting to order. If you all would please join me, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. If you could bow for a moment, sign a prayer. Thank you all for coming tonight. We have a few things on the agenda. We, uh, first thing is the minutes. And uh, sorry, I haven't passed those out. Uh, yeah, Leanne, if you could pass those around to the guys. And Tammy, have you got a copy of it yet? Uh, not the minutes from last time. Luke's got them. I don't have one. You got there? Yep. Yeah. Here they come. Yeah. Yeah. We do need one more, I think. Here we go, John. Oh, okay. Actually, I got hey, another copy. Oh, yes. Great. As long as there's an extra. Thank you. And I'm also going to pass around uh, the minutes for the special meeting that we had. Go ahead and make a motion to accept these. All right. And do we have a second? I'll second. All right. Thank you. I all have to say that. Very, very good. good. Thank and you. we are so glad to hear you talk. Mm -hmm. So very glad. Oh, wow. Yeah, you don't need the flags anymore. No. <laughs> and the other minutes, guys, are from the special meeting that took place on June 25th. Insurance. We do. Okay. That we're probably going to have to use and we due to the flood at the sewer plant. Yeah. Yeah. yeah two days. Days. Two days after uh, we uh, that new policy with the new company began, we had uh, a lot of rain in a short period of time, and it washed out the road at the treatment plant. I saw that here. Yes, and uh, it, it, it was a mess. Uh, I called the insurance agent. He sent an adjuster out to, a day later. Uh, the adjuster said, I don't even have a policy yet. And the insurance agent was there with us, and he said, well, you'll get it soon. We just wrote this, and uh, we are covered. The whole whole thing. And uh, in fact, I've got... I've got bids to, to do that work in the office, and I just forgot and left them in there to give them to you okay. to uh, open up here shortly. Uh, because there is, uh, in, in a lot of respects, this flooding was worse than the one we had in 2015. Because the, the one in 2015, it washed asphalt down into the lower lagoon. This one was a lot of gravel. And uh, in that bridge is in very bad shape. Uh, you know, when you first come into the plant yeah. and cross, yeah, it's very bad shape. And, and we need to be looking at uh, ways we can uh, prevent Stop that. that. Stop it from happening. Yeah, and we, we, our engineer, Clay Kelly, has been out looking at it, trying to give us ideas and options of what, what we can do. 
and it's not going to be an easy fix yeah, or at least the mitigation part you know fixing what we have that's one thing but uh, the mitigation is going to be the harder part and when you say mitigation what do you mean? to prevent uh, further damage down the road the next time and hopefully there's not but we should be ready in case there is have you all had a chance to look at these the June 25th minutes yeah okay I'll make more okay. second. Thank you, Commissioner Scott. And Harold, you second it? Yeah, I'll second it. All those in favor? Aye. All right, thank you very much. All right, now we'll look into the financial reports. Uh, you guys have those? You, I do. Yeah. Know. All right. We need to make me uh, three copies of those, please. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, and just. We'll pass them along. Uh, just to save time, uh, guys, we will move on to uh, uh, commissioner reports. How about that? Or let's discuss the cost for trash collection. Yeah, that's a good one. Uh, as you guys know, the, the trash collection the city pays part of that for everybody and uh, currently our residents are paying 625 and the cost is for us is seven uh, dollars a month per per unit um, are you all interested in making that seven for the customer seven dollars a month keeping it the same or increasing it Right now, we, we pay a dollar or 75 cents a month for people's trash pickup. Uh, and I was just, you know, looking at the... Well, the, I'd say make it seven that we were not losing. And make it an even seven dollars, the yeah. same as the cost for us. This, you know. Well, we're not using their trash, so why should we pay? Yeah. Well, years ago, as an incentive to, to do a mandatory trash pickup in town, uh, it was to pay half. The city would pay half and the residents would pay half. And that was, gosh, 80s, 1980s. And, uh, but that was back when it was like three bucks. <laughs> yeah, years ago, we paid a whole lot more. Right. Right. Yeah, right. But we found out we couldn't go that route at much. Right. I had to call it back to put it back. Right. Yeah. And we're paying how much now? Seven. It's it's seventy five cents per per unit is what the city actually pays. And we can like Newt said, we can make it even. Uh, if you want to, whatever the cost that we pay, put that on to the residents. What are they paying now? Uh, six twenty five. Seventy five cents. It would, it would make it and easy. that's a month, right? Yes, sir. It could be that they go that route if it helped the customer. Like less than a quarter a week. That's true. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, less than a quarter a week. Yeah. I make a motion that we just make it a $7. I'm ranking for it. All right. I'll second it. All right. Thank you very much. All right. And is there any discussion on that? All right. All those in favor? All right. Thank you. All right. Now we've got the financial reports. You guys want to look over those? That's right. They're coming around, John. Um, what are the strand associates? That is our engineers. That's the uh, Clay Kelly. <coughs> That's a big ticket item, too. Yeah. Is that, how often is that? Uh, that should be it until he does some more work for us. That, that finishes up. Uh, where he was working on uh, lift station number 
I want to say three, where we were looking at ways to uh, change that around a little bit. And the last flood. <laughs> that same thing? Yeah. And the all the Mon, Jessica Chad and William O'Brath is that that's the quick property. The one that's on the corner. Mm -hmm. and, and what is that? What is that for? It's where we bring these people to know the uh, quick properties. Yeah, the so that'll go against. Record. Yes, yes, we're keeping record for those uh, amounts so that we can put the, uh, the appropriate lien on the property. And Jordan hasn't had a chance to, uh, to uh, put those locks on the doors like mm -hmm. we talked about. Uh, he hasn't had a chance to do that yet, but he and I talked yesterday and he's been really busy with, with his work. Yeah, I've seen him. about it. So Jennifer was, took some sick and vacation time? Yes. periodically through town, you know, just to show a presence, you know, and it's nice to have a deputy uh, patrolling around town after hours of the sheriff's yeah. hours. Yeah, it's really good to have that presence. And a deterrent. Yeah, sure is. Uh, and, you know, and I was uh, talking to uh, Tara today, and we were talking about how the DUIs are down. You know, that kind of thing. There's not been any alcohol well, intoxication arrest or anything like that. There's not been any bent lads or a lot of bent right. lads. That's right. all down. Yes, it sure is. Yeah. So, the, you know, the alcohol has, has been a plus. It's created jobs. Right. I noticed Hometown Pizza is, is hiring like three people because now they're selling alcohol. And, you know, that's what we wanted. We wanted to create jobs and, and, and uh, Try to promote businesses in the town. I think several people approached me and wanted to know how they could get very thoughts on that other side. Yes, thank you, Marie, because that's a, that is a topic to come up with. Is that we need to start uh, looking at that. And we have the map for it. Of how, how it's laid out. Everything's getting down around that gazebo. Yeah. And they don't know what to do. They don't want to be on the other side. Right. And what we need to decide is how much. Yeah. The ones we, in the old, or the part we're selling now, what, 650? 600. 600. Mm -hmm. and, then I, and then when they do an opening and closing, they pay $100 that goes to perpetual care. So that's. That's a six hundred dollar charge plus the hundred seven hundred dollars. Yeah, and you know, so for the the new cemetery plots, um, we probably ought to go seven. And then the extra hundred. Yeah, when they open and close, they'll have that extra hundred. And uh, you know, I, I talk about this a lot. Uh, the care, taking care of that cemetery. Uh, for years down the road is, is not not gonna be easy. And we may have a couple million dollars worth of plots in that new side, but that comes in gradually and we still have to keep it up. I'll make a motion to accept the financials. Right, thank you, Kenny. I'll second that. And any discussion? All those in favor? All right. Thank you very much. So should we just continue on with that? Uh, Cemetery. So we have the plots lined out. Yep. 
where if somebody walked in, we wanted to start selling, we'd know exactly what, where they were and what we were doing. Yeah. And I, and I, now the only thing is, I, I think we ought to get some, like, those little pins, uh, when we do, like, like, there's families that want to buy five and six and seven plots. Right. And, and we ran into this a few months ago, where a family years ago, uh, bought ten, ten or twenty plots, and someone was buried on this end. Someone was buried on this end. Well, when we start putting people in the middle, we found out that they were two plots shy. But back then, they all they were doing was walking it off or eyeballing it, and, and it was a very difficult situation because you can't move somebody just because the you know those plots and, and that family has been very good to us about not demanding we uh you know jump in and pay them for the plots that they've purchased uh, or demand that we talk to the other family about moving their loved one thank god uh, but we really really need to get the tape measure out, you know, and, and measure the four feet for every grave so that we're not in this, or that the next generation is not in this uh, situation where there's not the grave. How is it between each grave? Four feet. Each, four. each grave is four feet by, by eight feet. Okay, but I mean, how so much space is in between? between? No space. They, they put them in vaults. So you're rubbing metal. Yep, those vaults are right next to each other. Yeah. Oh yeah. That's very interesting. I don't I don't know how they do it, but but I know that is how they do it. Do we know where we would want to start selling? No. I mean I would I would say up there by the road. And just go right down the road. And and I would recommend that we go six feet off the road. Yes. Just in case we want to widen that road down the road or not us necessarily but but somebody yeah. might want to widen that road yes, it's, it's 15 feet now and we need i mean there'll need to be a, a lane in the middle yeah somewhere the the people could go back yes it yeah, just tearing a coffin to the back part right it's be very heavy yeah so i think if we start off in the front you know, like here's our, our road, uh, and here's our cemetery building and the gazebo. But if we start on that road and just just go down the line. On the other side of the veterans. Mm -hmm. Yes, on, on the other side of the veterans. I guess the veterans is going to be right around here. And there's going to be a road at the bottom. And yes, and that's I think that's what Tam is talking about. And then one cutting through connected. Mm -hmm. Like a big... Uh, I'm going the wrong way. Like a big, uh, kind of like a big circle, really. Okay. That's it. Yeah. And I, and I don't know if we want to cut those roads now, uh, but it's not a bad idea to be thinking at least about that middle road, or at least marking off to say we are eventually going to put a road right down the middle right. and not sell. Right. In, about a, in about a 20 foot say, whoops, right. the road there. Yeah, in about a 20 uh, foot space. You know, the grave sites in there, years ago, what they all have. They had just a regular old casket then. And people bought them. They didn't figure it on being that wider, but see, they've extended out now. So much wider. The yeah. place takes the burden. Well, the, vault, the vaults are a lot. A yeah. lot. They're yeah. about a foot wider than and they were back in the 1930s. They're all that way, you know. They bought them. With a narrow casket, that's it. We have we have vaults in our cemetery uh, from the 1800s that are steel. Yeah. Yeah, and that, you learn a lot from grave diggers. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'd like, if you all are up to it, having a special meeting and meeting at the cemetery. Okay. So we can all have an open view of what there where we want to start where we would want to put those roads we actually look at right yeah, yeah and I'm even if we just had like the small sticks with the orange ties where we could little stakes yeah yeah and have a special meeting say you know 
Because I don't want to start, I, I'm afraid to start selling anything until we all get out there and look and make a plan. Right. A solid plan as to where we're going to start, where those roads will eventually be. Yeah, and that is the big thing there, where's those roads going to be? Yeah. Whether they're there right now or not, we need to at least have that in a plan before we sell the very first one. Absolutely. At least mark it off where they're going to be, the roads. Right. Yeah. So I say um, maybe sometime in August have a special meeting to go out there and meet out at the cemetery. We could do it on a Saturday morning sometime when you're... I have no idea my schedule yet. Okay. Until I get around my school schedule. Oh yeah, when do you start back to school? Next August. Week? Oh. But well, we could do it later this month. What it, you know, whatever is right. good for everybody. And as long as we don't have a quorum, you know, the two of us can go out there and do it too. And if you guys would be okay with that, yeah, let let and she I and I look at it. Yeah, or you two could go. Yeah, because it we do need to be planning on the road. Whether we cut it today or cut it in twenty years, we do need to at least be planning because that. It's like this, you know, it rolls yeah. uh, down the hill. But if we have a special meeting, then we'd have it on the books and right. whoever comes in behind us will know what we plan. Yeah. And this yeah. is where it sits. What do you think, well, Harold? Is if that it's a special meeting, we have to have a cool point. Yeah. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. yeah. Would you be interested in looking too and seeing what's I think we all ought to be involved, get it on the books and it have it and have yeah, something in writing. Have it lined out. You guys are good with that? Yeah. And we'll plan it later date. Not today, unless you got to want to look at a calendar. But see what the, a Saturday morning would be definitely be better. And John, I mean, you're, you probably will work day shift on Saturday morning. I have no idea yet. Okay. Like, when do you start back to school? Well, you won't go on Saturday anyway to school. Yeah, but it's my, I transferred my dog, so I don't know my schedule. How often do they give you a schedule? Once a week? I haven't put on a schedule yet. Where'd you transfer to? Madison. Ooh. Yeah, he's a manager over there now. Oh. Where's he, my bow tie? You ain't serving any of that bad, bad you medicine, You ain't gonna get all the complaints. Oh, no. Yeah. What about August the 4th? <laughs> okay. August 4th, anybody got August anything 4th. planned? What's that day? What's that day? It's a day. Saturday. Saturday. And we could do it like 10 o'clock in the yes. morning? I was going to say, let's please do a morning. Yes. 10 a.m. August 4th. Where we meet? At the we'll just gazebo. Meet out there. Yeah, we'll meet at the gazebo. Yeah, very good. Um, one more thing about the cemetery. Um, you had said for the um, annexation ordinance, which I'm still working on, we need a survey. Yes. So is that in process? How are we doing on that? Do we and, need a, and thank you for uh, bringing that up. We will need to uh, hire a surveyor to get that done. I'm sure that uh, we have a local guy that does surveys. Uh, Jim Piles is really good. Uh, if you guys are okay with that, I can reach out to him as early as tomorrow and, and get him to go ahead and get that survey done so we can keep going. Push, yeah, push that uh, through. Is that a motion or? Do yeah, you guys want to, somebody make a motion? I'll make a motion that we get the surveyor. And this is to annex the cemetery into mm -hmm. the? To the city limits. I'll second that motion. All right. See how. <laughs> and any discussion? Read that motion now, yeah. Uh, the motion is to hire uh, someone to survey the cemetery so that we could annex uh, that property into the city limits. And we have a motion and a second, and now we just need all those in favor. All right.
But the, yeah, and... No, no. That's good. And Hilda, maybe that'd be a good day for you to come if that's okay, and we'll just go on with the planning of the veterans place. And with the cemetery, I have a email from uh, Joe. Mm -hmm. She said, uh, they're currently cleaning the veteran unmarked graves listed in the cemetery book for possible veterans. We recently found World War II veteran and we'll be ordering his stone before the end of the month to add to the veteran's garden. I've got another one too, Hillary. Uh, so, uh, we're calling that the veterans memorial garden. Okay. As opposed to cemetery. I like that, because it is a garden, it's not really a cemetery. I like it better than a cemetery. Mm -hmm. But that area right there will be Veterans Memorial Garden. Yeah, I've got another one, another name to give you to uh, order a stone for. Okay. Uh, she said we have four stones on order through the VA for various cemeteries, not just the Bedford Cemetery, but other cemeteries too. In the process of scheduling five more stones, we're saying and have another 20 names we're currently researching. Hmm. As so, of this date and time, 15 stones have been set for the Trimble County veterans. Wow. Our goal is to have 50 veterans graves marked and documented before the end of the season. So that's uh, with all the cemeteries. Now there's one in Tennessee, there's one in Indiana, but they, they're native Trimble Counties. They're working with uh, Troy Kelton down at uh, Corn Creek uh, in the evenings because of the heat, and they're postponing any death work on any cemetery until later on in the fall. Cool, so it's so good. Yeah. Because it's too hot out yeah, there. And that ground's mm -hmm. hard as a rock. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is. Yeah. So after Labor Day, she said they would probably be working on uh, just get back into the cemetery work. Yeah. Good. Good, good, good. Well, all the stones, we have to do a lot of drive to. Mm -hmm. That's true. Yeah. But in the meantime, they're going to have more stones just yeah, well, set out there. Yeah, that's awesome. They got crack, they have crack to the ground that way. Oh yeah. Drop the car keys, give it a pair, they hit some china and then bottom of the foot. Right. <laughs> so since we're on the cemetery, shall I just go on? Yes, please do. Okay. Yeah. Um, another thing, we had an issue with a family that hadn't got a marker yet and wasn't convinced that their loved one was where they were supposed to be, so it had to be proven by digging and confirming the casket. Um, so an idea would be there's these small little markers, just a little stake with a, like a place where you put someone's name, like $20. And when somebody's buried, we could just put those temporaries there to have the grave diggers do that. So we won't run into that again and have to do more digging in. I see some out there up there, pictures of them. Well, um, some, Morgan some and Nay do they, do those. I wonder what they cost then. Any idea? No, and basically ours is just going to be to mark until they, you know, sometimes it takes a year to get a stone and get it up and yeah. everything. Now, I know Morgan and Nay will bring, if they bring people over, they'll bring their own and mark, you know, like that. But the other funeral homes aren't receptive to that. So I think in our own interest, we should probably supply some of those to the grave diggers that, you know, we can make sure that we at least know who's there. And, and when, you know, when they do funerals and they have the, 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 the carpet out there and the chairs and the tent, it's really hard to tell where you're, where you're at. It's hard to get your bearings. 
and you're not in the mindset to look around, you know, if, right. to try to know exactly where you're at. And, you know, it's a difficult time. And, and we want, Pardon me. We, we just opened the grave to verify uh, the vault. In the casket. Yeah. Was... And, uh, and it was hard, very hard for the family. It was, uh, I was out there involved with it and it was, it was really hard on me. <coughs> Because it's such a sensitive matter, you know. Right. I, nobody likes death, and and there is some water problem there by the gazebo. Oh yeah, the floods pretty bad out there on that south end. On yeah, covered all the wet area all the time. But you were right, Todd. I, I mean, I've been Paul Bear for several people. Yeah, and then I go back to visit them. I forgot where I was. Right. Right. I can't find it. Yeah. yeah. We've, we've had, we've dealt with that a lot, a whole lot. So I think we need to, you know, if somebody buys a plot in that area, we may suggest a sealed vault. Yeah. Yeah. And a, just, and, and make, it. just so they'll be aware that, you yeah. know, in heavy rains, it could be water damage. Don't worry about me if I'm, you know, it's, mm -hmm. Yeah. If, if it's going to be me, don't worry about it. I, you know, I like the water anyway, so. Right. And it's going to be a snorkel. <laughs> not going to really right. be there. We won't know. That's right. We will not know. But I'd like to make a motion to buy some of these little markers that we can use so people don't get lost. Yeah. I'll second it. Very nice. Right. Thank you. Nice yeah. Any discussion at all about it? How many are we going to buy? Uh, not many at first, I wouldn't think. I would think. just think three. Yeah. You know, that should be plenty. Just to get started and... Right. And like we said, Morgan and Nate, if it happens to be, you know, they do it themselves. Right. So... All those in favor? We'll move right along. You got anything else for the cemetery? Tonight? Other than, and Hilda, if you'll remember the special meeting, and then we'll take care of that that morning, too. Yeah. All right, Commissioner Green, do you have anything for the sanitation department? No, everything seems to be running, running fine. Good. Are you picking it up on time and everything? Mm -hmm. Moving on. Yeah. Uh, one one thing, if, if we could, uh, Hilda, if we could get this reported, uh, if if the residents are going to throw out big uh, items to leave them whole, like couches or entertainment centers or things like that, uh, one of the things that the, the uh, gentleman that uh, picks up the trash in town uh, said to me today was that it's it's easier for him if it's all in one piece and instead of having to pick up yeah. a whole bunch of pieces it, it just makes it easier well they do good i've seen them pick oh, up yeah. off the block especially the old house below there oh yeah been about yeah. three days on it I think. right and, and people need to also know that and we're going to put this on our sewer bills that it's really only one big item a month yeah it's not every week and and no uh construction materials should go should go in there and, and we're going to put that on the sewer bills to remind people yeah. uh, that, that that's not it's household trash that's the kind of stuff we deal with and and i'm sure if there's some light uh construction stuff but that house you're talking about had a significant amount of construction uh material that's put in trash i don't see it much <laughs> right all right, and uh, Leanne, can you get those two envelopes on my desk? It's a brown one and a white one. And because uh, Newt hasn't been here, I'll talk again about this flooding. Uh, the insurance adjuster said get two bids, and we're going to get this fixed. Uh, so, hand those to Newt. So we, we have two sealed bids here. And uh, I'll let Newt open them up and tell us what's going on. That's fixing the sewer plant, fixing the road and, and the bridge. The debris and mud will be removed and hauled away. 
We'll have a little fabric and rip rent put into place. Estimated price twenty six thousand nine hundred. How much? Twenty six thousand nine. The estimated price includes cost of all labor equipment needed to complete the job. The estimated prices are valid for thirty days. Any alterations and specifications will be will result in a change in the estimate price. Specifications are taken from provided plans. And what's the name of that business news? It is B and B Concrete Construction. Okay. And where where are they at? That is on Dawson Smith Road. Madison, Indiana. Okay. All right. What's that? Is that B and Z or B and Z? B and Z. B and Z. B F D. Insurance will pay for all of this, or we yes. have a deductible. Something? We have a thousand dollar deductible. Okay. All right. Okay. This one's got eight thousand on this one. Four. No, that's how much more it is. Oh yeah. And the Burkhart and Crawford's Trimble County, isn't it? Yes. Yeah, Melbourne, Kentucky. Mm -hmm. And they were really quick about helping us to get gravel. Well, it's insured. Right. You know, and I, I, I would see want to stick with her from the way I look at here. It looks like they get a little more in detail. Right. You know what I mean? Oh yeah, and and they did that upper lagoon, that rip rap all around the back. Yeah. First class job. Yeah. I would recommend that we go with the Kurt and Crawford. Uh, I'll make that motion. I'll second that motion. Thank you. All right. Any discussion? All right, all those in favor, uh, I will contact them uh, right away and let them know. They can get started. And they have already delivered us gravel that we own for anyway, but uh, they jumped in really quick. All right, John, you have any, or Newt, do you have anything else you want to talk about with the sewer? No, okay, I'd like to see it. I'm going to get things fixed. Well, yeah. well, we're very glad to have you back. All right, John, you have anything for the streets? I do not. They're looking pretty good. Okay. All right. Uh, John, I want to say this. Go ahead. Right there on that West Street and Church Street, somebody lost a bunch of hay. That was funny. Piles of... Uh, all the way up the street. Big pile there that's uh, wet. It was wet and the water all over the road there by that Fellowship Church. Mm -hmm. It's a mess. I want somebody to make them have them come back and get that cleaned up. I wonder if Jim got that today. No, I didn't. It done several days ago. Yeah, I didn't notice it when I came home from work yeah, today. Yeah, I think Jim went around yeah. and got it. I said so it's not there anymore, so it's not a problem. Well, it's it bad. Sense. It was bad. It scattered it all the way from the church for that other church. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we'll take a look at it then. Jim didn't get it today because I know he was cleaning up some debris on other parts of the streets too. And he's pretty good about getting that taken care of. All right. Uh, the next item on the agenda, guys, is to have the first reading on an amendment to the ABC ordinance related to the signage for businesses. And, and how this comes about is uh, the businesses in town that are selling the alcohol, currently our ordinance reads that they're allowed to have one sign displayed to the public view. And they have asked me uh, if they could put another sign up. And uh, I will turn it over to Joanne. Um, or do we have a motion to have this first reading? Well, I think, it, it, and as long as you, you know, 
talk to me. I, I think there might be a few things in addition that you might want to look at this because now F, section F here says all signage, all premises signage advertising is prohibited. Oh, off premises. But then later on, it seems like you, um, here it is on section I, we have no licensee shall advertise alcohol uh, beverages on any municipally owned property. So then I'm thinking it's okay to have it off premises, but here we're saying no off premises. Right. So this may be another thing that we want to take that out. Take out, yeah. Um, I don't know what the deal is with the outdoor umbrellas or outdoor pattern fixtures. Is that a big deal, or is that? I mean, Not I, at this time. Yeah, it, I don't know if this if this whole section F should perhaps be deleted along with the things that you've suggested. And then there's just one other thing uh, in G, uh, the top uh, <coughs> sentence on the second page. Again, uh, we it says that you're limited to two that be displayed from the inside of the window or the interior of the business. Well, I guess that, that goes along with everything else, so maybe that's okay to go ahead and keep that. Um, but yeah, I would look at F and perhaps include that in the... And, and delete it as well? I would. Okay. If that's what you want to achieve, yes, you know, like and that. it sounds like that's what it we is. We do. All right. Can I have a motion to have the first reading on this order? I'll make that motion. Thank you, John. Second? New, thank you, New. And all those in favor? Right. Oh, and you want me to read it then? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, display of printed warning, advertising, and other signage. Um, this is an amendment to Ordinance Number One, Series 2017, relating to the regulation of alcoholic beverages in the City of Bedford, Kentucky. Uh, a. All signage shall be in compliance with any and all other existing rules, regulations, and ordinances of the City of Bedford. B. No flashing lights shall be used to illuminate the exterior of any premises licensed under this ordinance. C. Any advertising by any licensee under this chapter shall be in compliance with KRS 244.130 and regulations promulgated thereunder. D. No licensee shall publish or display advertising that is false or misleading, nor any licensee publish, publish or display advertising that implies that consumption of alcoholic beverages is fashionable or the accepted course of behavior, or advertising that contains any statement, picture, or illustration implying that the consumption of alcoholic beverages enhances athletic prowess, whether or not any known athlete is depicted or referred to, nor shall any licensee publish or display advertising that encourages intoxication by referring to the intoxicating effects of alcohol or the use of terms such as high test, high proof, or extra strong, or depicting activities that tend to encourage excessive consumption. And section E would be uh, the section, a section that we are deleting. No licensee shall erect or allow to be erected any banner that displays any particular brand of alcoholic beverage on the outside of the building or on the property. Um, okay, and then we repeat, that's just a repeat. Scratch. And then, yeah, section F again, uh, which would be something that would be scratched, would be any off-premises signage advertising the sale of alcoholic beverages is prohibited. It shall be unlawful to attach signage advertising alcoholic beverages to the exterior of the building or the exterior premises of the business. This prohibition shall include the use of outdoor umbrellas or other outdoor patio fixtures that feature the name or logo of an alcoholic beverage or manufacturer of alcoholic beverages. G, signage which refers directly or indirectly to alcoholic beverages will be limited to and then we cross out the one sign, and then we're keeping two signs that may be displayed from the inside of the window or the interior of the business. No, then we cross out no, and additional signs, banners, posters, or other type of you know, displaying advertising, which refers either directly or indirectly to alcoholic beverages, and we just have may be displayed on or may be visible from the exterior of any premises licensed for the sale of alcoholic beverages. 
H. It shall be unlawful for a licensee under this chapter to distribute or cause to be distributed any handbills, cir circulars, or cards as a medium of advertising alcoholic beverages. I would be deleted. No licensee shall advertise at any municipally owned property or sponsored event. And then section two, that the alcohol beverage control ordinance may be waived, altered, or suspended only by change of ordinance. Uh, section three, this ordinance shall become effective after two weeks and publication requirements have been met. Right. Sound okay? Sound good to me. Yeah, you I suppose that takes yeah. care of the trash can with the two fluorescent poster boards. And the next item uh, on the agenda, guys, is a resolution for our charter franchise agreement. Um, if you recall, a little while ago, this uh, Benjamin Ucellus uh, came by and he has a new agreement. Um, the original one was, I think, in 1988. Yeah. And uh, they're actually, by statute, they can only run for 20 years. So um, that's uh, it's good that we're renewing that. and. The, the issue with the franchise agreement is that there are some requirements in the KRS and one of them is that you have to bid these things out and you're supposed to bid it for like 18 months. So we went back and forth with this with Milton because really it's kind of a renewal. It's not really a new one, but on the other hand, it really has run out. So it's kind of a new one. When I talked to Chris at um, KLC, he advised that in a situation like Trimble County, where in all reality, there probably is not anybody else who's gonna bid on these things, that it really will not hurt us to just go ahead and accept the agreement if that's what we want. Um, so I just wanna warn you about that. It really would not hurt the city. Who it would hurt would be charged because somebody else would come in and say, oh, you guys uh, never did the requirement before. So then we'd have to go ahead and bid it out, whatever. But in the meantime, um, you know, we could do a month to month with them, blah, blah, blah. In other words, it, my, my um, advice would be that I don't think we really need to bid it out. We didn't do it for Milton. So the second thing then is that what they're, what the law is offering us is a choice. These cable companies pay a certain amount of money to the state and it goes in a pot. And then at oh, once a year or whenever these payments get made, they divide it up between how many cities are in that pot or how many jurisdictions or whatever. What they're offering us is, and what they started to do was to go directly to the municipality and make an agreement with them. Now they still pay that money to the state, but we may or may not get it. Um, here, what they're offering us, and there is an increase in what they've been offering us. Apparently, maybe we've been going with about $2,000 a year. Yeah, it's like two percent. Yeah, right. They're offering us five thousand now. I mean five percent, excuse me. And so that goes up to sixty four hundred. Mm -hmm. So it seems like a good deal. Plus, um, when I talked to Chris again, he was like, "Well, you know, as far as the pot's concerned, it depends on how many cities are in it. You don't know how much you're going to get. It's like a bird in hand." So that's why my suggestion would be after all this research that I've done is to go ahead and accept this agreement. So um, the city of Bedford, Kentucky municipal resolution, what re resolution is it? Do this we is our first one of this okay. year. Okay, good. Series uh, 2018, the resolution authorizing franchise agreement with Charter Communications Company. Whereas the city of Bedford, Kentucky adopted an ordinance on March 7th, 1988, creating a franchise for the right to construct, erect, operate, and maintain in, along, and across the city of Bedford, wires, cables, and other such fixtures as may be necessary for the maintenance and operation of a cable television system, and 
whereas the city of Bedford, Kentucky has accepted the bid of Charter Communications Company in renewal of this agreement. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the city of Bedford, Trim County, Kentucky, that the mayor is authorized to sign the franchise agreement with Charter Communications Company. And after reading in full on the 17th day of July, 2018 and on motion by and seconded by the resolution is adopted by a vote of so many eyes and so many nays. So how do y'all feel about that? It's people who pay, uh, who have charter, a percentage of their bill will come to us. Instead of it going to the state and the state deciding how much we get, this guarantees what we will get. It will come to us first. It will come to us first, not the state. That's it keeps everything local. And, I, and yeah, you make that motion, Gary, to pass this resolution. I'll second. All right. And all those in favor? All right. All right. Thank you, folks. We'll get her signed. So we'll be getting six thousand instead of two. Yeah. yeah. And I've got uh, my um, email correspondence with them that talks about all that, and we'll put that in the file along okay. with. You know, so that you guys have that. That's our what we rely on. Very good. I'll let Joanne take a big breath uh, oh. while I'm talking about this. Yeah. Uh, oh yeah. We have, uh, you know, our town has become uh, largely a, a transient community. A lot of landlords in our town. And there, there are places in town that, uh, quite frankly, they're not fit for a dog to live in. <laughs> and there's some that would argue that the people that live in those places deserve it. Uh, and I would argue that they're still human beings, re regardless of where they live. Well, maybe they're down there look, that's all they can afford. That, that's all they... That's right. Well, and, and, and look, these rental properties still aren't cheap. They're, I mean, they're still, they're still charging the money for it. Uh, so I, I looked at uh, an ordinance from the city of Bellevue, Kentucky. They had a rental license agreement ordinance. And uh, in, in summary, uh, this ordinance requires anyone who has rental property in the city limits of Bedford will have to register with the city clerk all their rental properties. And each rental property will cost $25 a piece and then be subject to periodic inspection by our code enforcement officer to make sure that these uh, places are up to some kind of code. We really don't, uh, you know, Jordan and I have spoke about this. He's, he's not a buildings inspector. Uh, but there are some common sense things right. that, he, to be that he'll be able to he identify. Just be yes, but he, he'll be able to identify those just by common sense. And that's all we want uh, at this time. Uh, so I've put together this ordinance. It's very lengthy. Uh, and I would like to have a first reading on it tonight. If I could get a motion to have that first reading. We'll make a motion. Thank you, Tim. Thank you, Commissioner Green, and all those in favor. All right. You got it. Um, can I ask one quick question? Are yes. we talking about uh, interior as well as exterior? Okay. Yes. Just wanted to know. <clears throat> and what ordinance number is it? Do you this know? is, uh, I think it is ordinance number six. Okay. City of Bedford, Kentucky, Ordinance Number Six, Series 2018, an ordinance of the City of Bedford, Kentucky, establishing a new registration and rental license program. Whereas the City of Bedford, Kentucky, the city, seeks to improve its housing code enforcement program to provide for licensing of rental housing, and whereas the City of Bedford seeks to maintain quality rental housing, and whereas substandard and deteriorated rental housing has a detrimental effect. Um, and there's uh, a typo there we need to delete that to city residents and to neighboring communities and whereas improving rental housing requires licensing of rental housing to ensure that such premises conform to applicable laws and whereas 
In order to provide for such needed licensing of rental housing, housing, this ordinance establishes a licensing program to protect occupants from substandard housing and to main neighborhood, maintain neighborhood stability and to provide for an environmentally desirable community for all residents. And now, therefore, the City Commission of the City of Bedford, Kentucky does ordain as follows. Section number one, purpose and scope. The purpose of this chapter is to establish a rental licensing program in order to promote health and safety standards for rental properties, to protect tenants from substandard housing, and to maintain neighborhood stability. These standards relate to the condition, maintenance, and occupancy of rental units and are intended to ensure that rental housing is safe, sanitary, and suitable in accordance with all applicable laws. B. This chapter applies to all rental units within the city. This chapter shall not apply to an owner-occupied dwelling unit. Section 2. Definitions. Number 1. City means the city of Bedford, Kentucky. 2. Deficiency means any failure by a rental unit subject to this chapter to comply with applicable laws. 3. Occupant means an individual, partnership, corporation, or association, and or agent of any of them lawfully residing in a rental unit. 4. Owner means collectively the owner of record title of a rental unit as shown on the last equalized tax assessment roll and or such owner's authorized agent. 5. Rent means a payment of an amount fixed by contract agreement or lease made by a tenant at specified intervals in return for the right to occupy or use the property of another. 6. Rental housing means collectively all rental units within the city. Seven. Rental license means a license issued by the city pursuant to this ordinance. Eight, rental unit means any rented residential or commercial structure or space within the city being rented or leased. Nine, unit unavailable for rent means a rental unit whose owner has filed with the city a statement signed under penalty of perjury in accordance with administrative regulations adopted pursuant to this chapter, which statement provides that such rental unit is not offered or available for rent as a rental unit, and that prior to offering or making available such rental unit for rent as a rental unit, the owner will apply for a rental license and for such rental unit pursuant to this chapter and any applicable administrative reg regulations adopted pursuant to this chapter. Section number three, applicability and exceptions. The provisions of this chapter shall apply to all rental units, except, however, that the provisions of this chapter shall not apply to a owner-occupied rental units, b rental units that are owned, operated, or managed by a government agency other than the city or which are exempt from municipal regulation pursuant to state or federal law or regulations, but only so long as such government ownership, operation, or management or exemption from municipal regulation continues in effect. Section 4. Compliance and licensing requirements. Every owner of a rental unit must comply with the license requirements of the city and the requirement to obtain a rental license under this chapter. Section 5. Rental license required and prohibition. Number 1. No owner or other person shall offer for rent or otherwise allow to be occupied via leasehold any rental unit unless the owner has first obtained a rental license under the ter terms hereof. Two. No tenant shall occupy any rental unit that has not been issued a rental license. Three, owners of all rental units existing at the time of passage of this ordinance shall apply for and obtain a rental license within three months of the effective date of this ordinance and thereafter 30 days prior to a property being converted to a rental unit or being converted to include a rental unit. Four, any owner desiring to offer for rent any rental unit shall make a yearly application to the city for the rental license. Five, all applications shall be made on the forms prescribed by and provided by the city. Upon payment of the associated fee, the city shall issue a rental license authorizing the owner to offer for rent the identified rental units. Six, one rental license shall be issued for each rental unit. A purchaser of any existing rental unit shall make an initial written application of the building official for a rental license within 90 days of the purchase. Seven, the city shall have authority to exercise its regulatory powers hereunder, including the power to issue, deny, renew, revoke, and suspend any rental license if the applicable laws are not met. Section six, six, <laughs> rental license fee. The annual rental license fee shall be $25 for each rental unit. 
Section 7, Rental License Standards. These minimum conditions shall be satisfied in order to obtain a valid rental license. Failure to comply with any of these conditions shall be adequate grounds for the denial, refusal to renew, revocation, or suspension of any rental license. Number two, owner shall have paid the required annual fee of $25 per rental unit. Number three, owner shall have submitted a complete application on the forms required by the city. Number four, the rental unit must not then be in violation of any applicable laws or delinquent on any city ad valorem tax or assessment. Section 8, vacating rec rental unit upon expiration or revocation. If any rental license has been denied, revoked, suspended, or has failed to be applied for and is not renewed, then the city shall issue an order that the rental unit be vacated, giving the occupants thereof a reasonable time to arrange for new housing, not to exceed 90 days. Any rental unit so vacated shall not be re-rented until a new rental license is properly obtained. Section 9, License Expiration. Every such license shall be valid for one year and expire on April 15th of each year. The rental license is non-transferable and any change in ownership shall require a new license. Section 10, Promulgation of Rules and Regulations. The city shall have authority to issue and promulgate such rules and regulations deemed needed for the administration of this ordinance, provided such rules and regulations are not inconsistent with the provisions herein. Section 11, remedies not exclusive. The remedies provided herein are not to be deemed exclusive and do not supersede or affect the legal rights and remedies provided under other law. Section 12, determination of non-compliance and notice. If the city determines that any rental unit fails to meet the licensing standards and conditions set forth herein, he, she shall ma mail a notice to the owner, non-compliance notice. The non-compliance notice shall be deemed sufficient if sent by regular first-class mail to the owner at the address specified in the last license application filed with the city. A copy of the non-compliance notice shall also be conspicuously posted on the rental unit the non-compliance notice shall specify the reasons for the rental unit's failure to meet the required applicable laws and shall include a copy of any inspection report if applicable. The non-compliance notice shall indicate that the owner has 30 days in which to correct the deficiency specified therein, after which time action may be taken to deny, refuse to renew, revoke, or suspend the rental license. However, upon written request, the city may grant an extension of the period for compliance where the work or other correction has been delayed despite good faith compliance efforts and where such extension presents no immediate threat to the health and safety of the occupants of the rental unit. The owner shall, within the time period specified in the non-compliance notice, correct all deficiencies specified therein. If the owner fails to correct all deficiencies in the time period specified in the non-compliance notice, then the rental license may be revoked and the occupants therein ordered to vacate the premises pursuant to, sus to the suspension and revocation provision of this ordinance specified in section 16 below. Section 13, suspension slash revocation procedures. If after a non-compliance notice has been sent, and the required remediation period provided in Section 12 has expired, the city determines or has probable cause to believe that the rental unit still fails to comply with any of the applicable laws or any other provisions set forth herein, the city may request the revocation or suspension of any rental license issued hereunder after notice to the holder and upon a hearing as herein after provided. A. Notice. The city shall mail, both certified and regular, a notice of any request for revocation or suspension of the rental license, a suspension notice. If the certified mail is returned unclaimed, the suspension notice shall then be conspicuously posted on the building. The suspension notice shall contain the following information. Number one, that the city has determined that the rental unit fails to comply with the applicable laws or any other provisions set forth herein indicating the specific reasons for such failure, including copies of applicable inspection reports or non-compliance notices sent to the owner which have not been remedied. The suspension notice shall be delivered to the tenant of each rental unit and shall also be conspicuously po posted on the rental unit. Number two, that the owner has failed to take appropriate remedial action. 
Number three, that the city has referred the matter to the Code Enforcement Board with the recommendation to revoke or suspend the rental license who shall have the fi final determination. Number four, the date, time, and place for the hearing before the Code Enforcement Board. Number five, that after any revocation or suspension, the rental unit shall not be reoccupied or rented until sufficient proof has been provided to the city that all violations are corrected and the rental license reinstated or reissued. B, hearing. The Code Enforcement Board created under KRS Chapter 65.8801 to 65.8839 and the City of Bedford Court Enforcement Ordinance Number 7, Series 2016, shall be designated as the body authorized to conduct, conduct hearings and recommended suspension or revocation of any rental license and shall have the power to render a final decision and order with regard therefore, thereto and to do any and all other acts as necessary to fulfill the pur purposes of this ordinance. C, decision and appeal. The decision of the Code Enforcement Board shall be reduced to writing and shall be considered final. The written decision shall be mailed to the owner by certified mail. Any agreed party to a decision thereof may appeal the same within 30 days of the date of the issuance thereof to the Trimble District Court. Section 14, reinstatement fee. An additional fee of $40 must accompany any application for reinstatement of any rental license revoked or suspended. The reinstatement fee shall be in addition to any prior rental license fee imposed herein. Such fee, however, shall not apply to a rental unit or units condemned because of destruction by an act of God or causality for which the owner is not responsible. The city may waive the reinstatement fee or any portion thereof. Section 15, penalties. Number one, any person who shall violate a provision of this ordinance shall, upon conviction thereof, be subject to a fine not less than $100, nor more than $500. Number two, each day that a, separate, that a violation continues after due notice has been served shall be deemed a separate offense. Um, so then this should be number three, I think. The city shall also have the right to seek civil injunctive relief against any person person or persons who rents any un rental unit in the absence of a valid rental license and to recover the litigation costs and attorney fees incurred by the city therein. Section number 16, annual review and report. The code enforcement officer shall conduct an annual review of the program established by this ordinance and shall submit an annual report to the Bedford City Commission during the month of May. Section 17, immediate health and safety threats. Nothing in this ordinance shall limit the city's ability to issue citations for property related conditions that may constitute an immediate health or safety threat. Section 18, severability. If any provision of this ordinance or the application thereof to any person or circumstance is held invalid, the remainder of the ordinance, including the application of such part of provision to other persons or circumstances, shall not be affected, thereby and shall continue in full force and effect. To this end, provisions of this ordinance are severable. The City Commission of the City of Bedford hereby declares that it would have passed each section, subsection, subdivision, paragraph, sentence clause, or phrase thereof, hereof, irrespective of the fact that any one or more sections, subsections, subdivisions, paragraphs, sentences, clauses, or phrases be held unconstitutional, invalid, or unenforceable. Section 19, publication and reading by summary. This ordinance may be read and published in summary form. Section 20, uh, effective date, this ordinance shall become effective upon passage, approval, and publication according to, to law. <laughs> Can that be broken down by two pages? <laughs> you know? It will be I somewhere. Mean, yeah, 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 we'll yeah, we'll, 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 Nobody <laughs> understands that much on that thing. I think it was originally a, an ordinance with another city, what is it, Bellevue, Bellevue. so, you know, they just yeah. dotted every die and crossed every sheet. Yeah. yeah, they did. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, that was our first reading. That right. was our first reading. So. And thank you all for that. I, I think this is, this is a step in the right direction to, to provide uh, better housing for people in town. Right. Like everybody deserves a place to live, but nobody deserves to have to live in a place like that. Especially with the prices that they're charging. 
Now, when you're talking about inspections outside and in, yes. you're talking about windows out, walk floors, yes, sir. holes in the walls. Mold. You're not talking about the way those people live. No, sir. Not at all. Yeah, not at all. Because, you know, everybody's different. That's right. Yeah, if they got that's a sink full of dishes, that's just the structure. Yeah, that's none of our business. They that's got a sink right. full of dishes or dirty clothes laying everywhere or, or even clean clothes laying everywhere. That's none of our business either. Yeah. But if this if it's got holes in the right. walls the and windows are broken. And no heat or no right. plumbing right. or that's right. Electricity. I mean it's it's and it's common sense stuff right now. This, this opens that door, and, and we need to walk through it uh, for, our, for our people. And Jordan, do you have any comments? I mean, you good with all this? I'm fine with it. No problem at all this one. Okay. That's awesome. All right. Uh, the next thing, guys, is we need to start uh, planning for our Citizen Appreciation Day. And I ought to, uh, need to tell you that next Thursday, July 26th, is Milton's uh, Citizen Appreciation Day or Customer Appreciation Day. Uh, theirs is from 11 to 2, I believe. So if, if, if y'all can make it down there to that, uh, go down and uh, they'll have a nice meal and it's a, it's a good time. Uh, something I thought about this year for ours is uh, we throw the Halloween party. Why not make it all in one day? And, yeah, I think that's a good idea. And, and plan it for October the 27th. Yeah, you guys like that idea? Sounds good to me. And I'll bring more details later, yeah. you know, about what all will go on. But And it won't be too hot to right. kill two birds with one stone. And we already stone. do the Halloween party, and that is so well attended. There's so many people appreciate that, and, uh, and we'll have a good time. All right. Uh, do we have any other business y'all yeah. like to bring up? I got something to bring up. All right. I'm just trying to be short and make it short. That's fine. Okay, with all these other problems we have, we got a problem 4th of July with these big firecrackers. Ooh. Big firecrackers, boom, and they tell me they shoot them out with a little cannon, cannon now. Hmm. Well, it's pretty cool. <laughs> I disagree. I disagree. I agree with you. Saying, but you, I want to let me get finish yeah. here. You know, we've been elected a commission here to provide services, many services you can for people of better. And with an environment of peace and quiet. Okay, I've heard a lot of people talk about these bo uh, bombs. I don't like them. One of them said they scared her to death. And there's a lot of people not speaking up. We don't need that in town here. These big, they happened two to three weeks before 4th of July, mm -hmm. and two days after. A lot of people have to go to work and work and all, stuff like that. They can't get no sleep. But we don't need these bombs going here. A little cracker? Yeah, it's all right. Need to do away with them. And we, we do have an ordinance on them. Uh, and we got an ordinance on them? It's supposed to be 200 feet from any structure when they're setting on fireworks. Right. And, and, and the, the, off right in the middle of town. You saw the ordinance. Well, they're shooting them yeah. everywhere. Yeah. There's about four or five different places they're shooting them down this way, that way, that way, that way. You know, I'm with you, Harold. I yeah. think, you know, yeah. a little fireworks, a little hey. light, but these, all that it is, yeah. is a Noise. cannon. It makes yeah. my dog I like to make a motion. Mine too. Yeah. Motion that we do away with it. Well, here's the, here's the issue, Harold, because we already have that. We've already got the order. Well, okay, but they're not done. They, they got no. Uh, but the hard uh, police, part is, police can't do nothing about it. There it is. Who is going to enforce it? Jordan and I have talked about this. Who who would we get to enforce it? Well, if we put a if we put a fine on them, if we put a fine on them, I called the state police. You did. Did they ever and, show and up? What did they do? And did they want to see the city's ordinance or anything? No. If, because, yeah, I'm, I agree with you. If we put about a $50 fine on them. They drive me crazy. That my $50 dog goes, fine on them goes nuts. I believe they take care of some of them. But they shouldn't be shooting them because they're scaring the people. And how do we how do we determine it? who it is? Short of seeing them. Well, Maybe we should have like a decibel meter so that way we, like, we know how loud it is. 
So okay. that way we can monitor it and just like set a decimal. And where would we keep it? Level. At? Put it on the outside of the building up here? That might work. But uh, if they go to the park out there, it'd be all right. But you know, shoot them here and well, there. Like Jordan said, that ordinance says it has to be 200 feet from any structure. Yeah, well, they're well, going to turn it off 200 feet. It's hard to get 200 feet. There's no way anywhere in town. Yeah. They could get but, 200 boy, feet. I think it may be worth yeah, our, our take, while. You take three weeks of that boom bomb overnight, and you get used to it. Uh, you don't get used to it. Don't get you don't get, get Neither used did to the it. animals. No. I don't get used to it. You don't get used to when a bomb's going to go off, and you don't know when. Uh, well, I say that. I know it's it's past the fact now, but next year, yeah, I say start in the middle of June. We it, make a big year, announcement that last year, yeah, was, I, and I Ma, think that's it. Ma, Ma. Send a copy year, of the ordinance in the sewer bill. Yes. Because and, and that that's there right. will be and we'll make a an amendment to it that there will be a fifty dollar fine. I, I think yeah. there's a fine on that a fifty dollar fine. Doing, and there already a fine on that ordinance. I believe there is. Yeah, I believe there is a fine already attached to that ordinance. I think we should come up something more. Than well, if any of us are here, we can do. We can right. enforce these. I won't be enforce these because they will be more next year. Right. So uh, how, how are we going to enforce them? Considering like well, after it goes off, that that is that is the complicated part of it. Is is well, and you know, there's been some of those big booms that I heard were taking place back on Mount Pleasant Road. Mm, that could have been and on it was it was rattling my windows. But it, it was uh, in Bedford here for three weeks. Oh, I'm with, with you, Harold. I, I hate them. And then two days afterward. Yeah, yeah, I don't I don't like them at all. My dog goes crazy, I go it, crazy. But and, and uh, it just I, hurts me way he does. We're supposed to provide this uh, environment of peace and quiet. We uh, shouldn't be at people go through the right. Well, we have like a curfew for stuff like that. Just and, and that, may be, that may be something we look at too. Look, we know if it goes off after 10 o'clock at night or... I mean, I don't uh, hear it at 11, well, 12 o'clock at night. Like, there's several people I've yeah, heard yeah. And just say, hey, you can do it place. the 3rd, 4th, and 5th yeah. and, right. and be done. But I sit on the back porch for two light hours to watch the show. Yeah, yeah. It was, or maybe even the weekend after, because yeah. this year, you know, that we're it's God was going on the right. weekend after. They set them off on their own place. And then, yeah. you know, we can't do nothing to them, or, Well, yes, we well, can, unless, because it's unless we, have, unless we have something to penalize them. And we have, to, we have to be able to uh, find a way to prove who it is. Because what you said you called the state police, Hilda. Were they able? To, were they able to identify who it was? I didn't know. Oh, you did know. You saw them, maybe. Okay. Well, there you go. And what did the state police do? Well, I don't know what they did. Okay. And did they? And it worked. Yeah. Yeah. He did. I didn't know what he did I called the state police and said, oh, we can't do nothing to it. We can't do nothing to it. Right. Uh, that's what I've been told. Said, we don't, y'all don't have anything that we can do anything with. And we do, we do have an old law. Well, that's what they're saying now. What's the state law say about it? State law says nothing after 11 o'clock. Yeah. So, so that may be what helps. That's the statute. Can you say that again? KRS 227.715. Uh, I think we need to get hold of this. Yeah, squeeze uh, it out. I, I know. I know. Boys like set them off, but you know, uh, when you're disturbing people, right? You know, it's a different story. And dogs. Yeah. And, the animals. and yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. 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 I mean, you have them falling on your rooftop. Yeah, that's true. It could cause a fire. And you have people in that new yard. Mm, mowing. Well, yeah, there were several spears in our yard. Well, I knew like, it a few no, years ago when they get the neighbor that way. I'd see them fly up on there. Yeah, they blow. I mean, like, jammed into yeah. the yard. Oh, uh, right. Yeah, and, uh, they were all over my yard, all over my roof. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And, it could call, and that's, that's why that ordinance says 200 feet, because yeah. it could cause a fire. Yeah. Well, yeah. Well, that's well, that's the the Oh yeah, you can hear it. Like tuck. I put a reminder that next year we'll uh, send it out in the water bill in June. Yeah. 
I think we should get uh, yeah. something that we we'll get in the paper yeah. so yeah. these people can see it, it, the paper can see it and say, well, we didn't see nothing at all. You didn't know nothing about it. There was a paper telling you all about it, see? And put it on social media yeah. where more people can look at it. Just a few days. Yeah. I yes. Yeah, a week. One week of the 4th of July. Fourth of July, you know, if they just, uh, can, you know, uh, let them be on the Fourth of July, it'd be yeah. different. But I'm all about the PGR. Yeah, two weeks, week, three weeks before, no. A month. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, oh yeah, it makes me crazy. All right, do we have any other business to attend to? Well, Debbie was supposed to be here to give us an update on the cemetery mapping, which is about done. Um, I'm going to... I'd like to see her finish that in a month. So I'll give Jennifer, talk to Jennifer and ask her to let her know that we'd like to have that finished within the next month or so and come next meeting and show us what she's got. That sounds good. That sounds good. All right. I'll have her request Absolutely. We're on Courthouse Square, the outer perimeter, West, or Church Street. West Street, Spring Avenue. I like the inspection of the uh, outer perimeter of that curve there. Uh, part of that on my front yard, my property, uh, over the years it's deteriorated. Um, I just like to maybe get somebody to take a look at it. I'm not suggesting anything be uh, done about it tonight. Is it the place me and you talked about a year or so ago? Uh, that was a training, uh, training that I was requesting to have uh, maybe put in um, there at the corner of the property when it does rain, the way that the road slopes and where the sidewalk comes down and meets the road, it does pull water there. Mm -hmm. um, I still like to have that done. I don't know if been pleased about that either. Uh, it probably won't, Jordan, just because it's a private residence. Well, the sidewalk is city property, correct? No. Yeah. That, that belongs to the homeowner. Side, the sidewalk may be on your property, but and the city may have put it there, but that the responsible party for the sidewalk is the homeowner. That part is ours. Yeah. Uh, the, the sidewalk itself is fine. Where the issue is, is where slow the road and the curve and the sidewalk meet. It does pull water there. And that's why we spoke. And, and is it higher on the road part? It's higher on the road part. The road is higher than the sidewalk. There's a, a wheelchair access point there in front of the residence. Um, I just like to have a look at it. And I see the usual thing. I would say because it's on private property, <coughs> it would not be in our case just because it's private property. Uh, because there are other situations in town where somebody would like us to look at similar situations. Mm -hmm. And uh, when we're spending money, it has to be how many, how many people is this gonna affect? Right. And if it's a one residence thing, um, I mean, it's a little hard. Anybody who uses the sidewalk in the city. If it's unlevel, <laughs> then it is, right. it would definitely be right. something. And uh, I, I know that I had talked to uh, Russ Crawford about that situation years ago mm -hmm. about the drainage and stuff. And uh, he said it was a, a big uh, issue. Good. When you know you get into the construction of it, and that's right. why I've never brought it up again, uh, because I knew that uh, if, if it's big spending money, uh, it would be hard to convince the public that this is a good thing. I mean that road. I mean it's West or uh, Spring Avenue there, I and mean, it's used by people who go to the courthouse. Right. I and mean, that's something we can probably look at to build up, right? You know, pavement wise or cut down. I guess, yeah.
I just feel like having curves around the outer perimeter a little bit. Is that the same issue when you're talking about the curve? Is that the water? No, I was talking about the curve and talking about the drain. Yeah, I thought right, that was right, right, right. Uh, and now I was, now I was not talking about the drain at the moment. But I, I like to have the curves a little bit. I mean, they are deteriorating, they are over. Um, and it's not just in front of my residence. It's, it's where they have those old creek rocks, isn't it? It's what it looks like, yes. Yeah. Yeah, all the way around. All the way around the outer perimeter. On the outer perimeter, outer perimeter around yeah. the courthouse, they have yeah. fixed a lot of areas there. Oh, yeah, um, they shored that up. Correct. About 20 years ago, I think. So the outer perimeter, I mean, over time, that, you know, stuff ain't crazy. And, and I think, uh, you know, we've all seen it. It's just, it's so common to us, we don't pay attention to it. But I, I know now what you're talking about. That's That's a... Uh, it's an option of we could take out all that creek rock and just let it go grass to to uh, street, or uh, fix what's there. I mean, that, that sounds like an option. No, I would like to have it fixed personally. So I can maintain the grass there. I can do grass road. There may be some roads and issues, and that is there on. would be. Yeah. Got a little bit of an incline there. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I would suggest fixing it. I just like y'all take a look would at it, it. Would it cure the pooling there? I'm sorry? Would it cure that pooling there by your place if you it, took it's out? It's a possibility. It may. If that gets fixed and, and the way that that road meets the sidewalk there, it may. I don't know. Right. Okay. All right. We'll get pictures to present. Uh, guys, and we can put them on the thing behind us so we can all look at it. How's that sound? Sounds like Does that sound agreeable. If you could get the, if you if you would get the pictures to show us, I mean we're all going to look at them anyway. But but I don't think any of us are structural engineers or of any kind. No, not my ears. Yeah, so we're all kind of uh, at a loss. But those those stones are old. And it's historical. Uh, so, so in, in one respect, I think it, it would be nice to preserve that part of history. That's kind of what you're saying, isn't it, Jordan? They can preserve it, preserve it. Yeah. I mean, that, that's fine. I mean, that is. Yeah. Because you got, you got a section here, you got grass going down the road, and you got a section of rock here. Down there by the. Just the old old the road and lost way. Yeah, yeah, there by the bed and breakfast, it's down by the grass. Yeah, all right. Anything else, folks? All right, I will entertain a motion to adjourn. I will make that motion. Of course you will. Yeah, thank you, John. I will second. Gary second, and all of you. All right, thank you very much, folks. Thank you for coming. Thank you for watching.